Jennifer Kendall. And I'm Gail Hackenberg from the Medway Cultural Council, inviting you to experience our exciting new Artist Spotlight series. The series is going to highlight artists that live right here in town that many of you know about and some of you don't even know about. So we're inviting you to watch these episodes on a monthly basis and find out more about the artists that are right here, right underneath your own eyes. This month's artist is Jesse Green, a nationally renowned chainsaw sculpture artist, author, musician, and motivational speaker. You can spot some of his sculptures in various locations around town, like for instance in front of the police station. And with that, I will let you see his work and process and inspiration for yourself in this video. And remember to keep up to date about the Cultural Council. Please visit our website or find us on Facebook. I am the machine Jesse Green and I'm a master chainsaw sculptor, motivational speaker, musician and writer. I live down on Village Street in Medway. Uh, you can't miss my house, it's the one with the bare mailbox and um, I love being in Medway. I was always a cartoonist. It was cartoons, cartoons, cartoons my whole life. Everybody said you should be an artist when you grow up. When I went to college, um, I went in as an illustration major and got about a year in and said you know what, this is, I, I want to do more, I want to build, I want to make. Um, I was really inspired by the, uh, the toy soldiers in Framingham at Chopper's World. The, anybody who's been around, around this area remembers those and they're still dotted around. So I changed my major to sculpture. Another year or so later, I, I happened to, to uh, pass by a log one day driving down the road. I had a van, so I said I'm grabbing that. It was the messiest, sappiest decision of my life. but I. I then went and bought my first chainsaw, I had never used a chainsaw before ever, and just sort of went for it. And I knew that that's what I had to do, was just to make big things. But it was love at first cut, and it was, it was all, it, 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 from there it just kind of it went. I've done sculptures for rock stars, cities, the military, universities, networks, professional sports teams, uh, uh, Fortune 500 companies, things that people would, would someday point to and be like, I, you know, or, or give directions using my art as a, as a, a point of, of direction and, and wanting to have their picture taken next to it. And just, it, just the fact that it makes you smile, I've been very lucky. When I first started sculpting, I was obviously looking for inspiration you know, before I started and it was, okay, I see this log as this. Oh, I wanna make this and now I'm gonna look at this log in a certain way. Yeah, because all I see is a blank canvas when I look at a log. And then once you tell me what you want me to see, I'll go into deep thought on it and I'll, I'll see that. I'll, I'll hold up, I'll take pictures and I'll, um, I'll look at the different pictures of the things that we're trying to go for. And I'll, I'll mold, a, or rather not mold, but, but cut away until I reach that destination. I think it was uh, Michelangelo that said, you know, I just, I just cut away until a person appears. So you just gotta, you gotta go slow and easy. It's in my mind, I'm measuring 18 times before I cut once because you cut too much off, that's it. You're forced to be very mindful of exactly what you want to do and, and make sure that what you do, that there's a purpose to every cut you make. So this is the class of 2020's gift to Keene State. And um, it starts with this. This is a composite of images that they gave me, some I found offline. And you know, you've got some that are classic birds, some are mascot with feet. I kind of combine the two as I often do to get the perfect thing because it doesn't need feet, but I like the talons and it's got the wings. And, and so it starts with a log and, and I just, I start with the biggest chainsaw and work my way down. Um, people are often surprised, I think, to find out how little chainsawing it actually takes because I'm so measured in each cut. I try to work my way down to the, the electric tools, the little detail tools as fast as I can so that I'm not having to worry about Oh God, I cut, that, I cut that off or I cut too much. And, um, and when it's your whole reputation on the line, you want to make sure that you do everything right. Try to imagine that the width of these shoulders up to the top of these, of these um, ears, I guess they are on an owl, this, is, this was all one cylinder. And then I need to come in and, and cut it with the big chainsaw so that you get these big boxed out angles. And then what you end up with is a, is a very boxy, squared off shape where I try to make everything match up and then I can go in with the smaller tools and round. 
smaller chainsaws, little electric things, and, and to try to just round and round and round little by little by little until you get what you're looking for. And I'd say the thing that I'm the most proud of on the whole thing is, it, it is the paint job on the whole. I, that's always the thing that I'm, I, because I, I have the most extensive uh, finishing process in, in all of chainsaw sculpture. I defy you to find another chainsaw sculptor anywhere in the world who will obsess over the paint and, and, the, and the size of the brushes as much as I will. So that to me is, is like become my calling card. And um, when, I can, when I'm able to do stuff like this and stuff like, like this, that's, that's something I can really stand behind and be proud of, I think. You can see my work pretty much just driving down the street almost anywhere around here, and, and it's, it's spread all over the country. What's next? Well, I'm really, really, really focused right now on my, my motivational talk and my forthcoming trilogy book series, Chainsaws, Cheeseburgers, and Rock and Roll. I do think that everybody has the desire to be an artist in them, and a lot of people don't even realize it. But everybody has a release in art in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's singing in your car on your way to work or singing in the shower, whether it's taking a photo, you know, taking a little extra care with how you frame your iPhone photo, it just helps you to escape from reality or to help explain reality. We, don't, we, we only know about the human experience and the beginning of time because of art. We only know about history because of art, because of paintings and because of writings. And, and it's, it is the artist's duty to shed light on history.